Okay, so let's move to the metal system. Mm, when we have a metal, metal uh, materials, so you you have the metal atoms in gray. Then we try to apply the electrical field. So you got the cathode here and anode here. So what we observe uh, in these metals is, um, we observe the positive metal atoms moved toward to anode instead of toward to cathode. Most of um, probably in the beginning you will think that uh, the ma the positive metal atoms should should move to the cathode, right? Because it is a positive negative, so it should be probably moved to the cathode. But why? In most of cases, we observe the positive metal atoms move to the right hand side, move toward to anode. So this is after a serious investigation, they find that the reason here is the electrons flow, the flux of electrons bombardment on this metal ions to push this metal ions moves toward to anode and and la and left a vacancy and this vacancy as long as there are lots of vacancy then they will easily accumulate to form a void so that's it that's what we call the electron migration so back to the definition here we apply the electrical potential gradient and this gradient induces a diffusion in metals yes the diffusion happens right Due to what? Due to the interaction between the electrons, electrons flow and the diffusing atoms, and there's a momentum exchange between the electrons and migrating atoms. So that will, that's the reason why the atoms can be moved toward to anode. So why the um the the electron migration is so important and when it happens so this is the uh, this is the cross section of the conducting line in a microchip so if you take a, a look on the cross section images under the SEM and this is a copper and it's constant right so we take a look on the cross section of this uh, copper wire then we also mark the direction of the electrons flow is go this way and you find some interesting stuff you saw you observe some voice here everywhere along this uh, copper wire so this is uh, this is the, elect uh, the direction of the electrons right so uh, this void as long as this void get bigger and bigger and it have chance to cover all the metal wire that will result the failure of this microchip. So, so that's why electron migration is so important. We need to avoid that, right? We need to learn what is it and uh, what's the mechanism behind it. We have chance to avoid this effect. So when it happens, as long as the, the uh, current density is high enough, means the, also the electron flows uh, is high enough, then um, let's easily have observed this void form inside your materials. And as you know, the light width in the semiconductor uh, decrease to significant decrease to several nanometers so the current density definitely dramatically increase in the meantime so that will cause the electron migration phenomenon is frequent frequently observed in the um, conducting line so we need to find a way to solve it to avoid it. otherwise uh, it will significantly affect the reliability of our chip. Okay, so in order to quantitatively to describe the electron migration, so we we want to, uh, we want to 
show you what's the atomic flux in metals. So first of all, we also uh, need to define our materials first. So we consider we have a dilute solution of interstitial atoms in a metal. So, so what this means actually in the beginning, probably this metal uh, has a FCC structure and we did have some dilute solution at the interstitial side here labeled in red. And we apply the electrical field on these materials at constant temperature. So now, how many driving force be applied on the system? First of all, um, there are probably two possible driving force. The first one would be the electrical field. That would directly driven dri uh, drive the current density. And the second purpose possible driving force would be the chemical potential gradient. Right? of the diffusing like this interstitial atoms so direct drive the inter uh, interstitial the atomic flux so as you know when you, we try to write down the current density directly driven by the electrical field we apply on it and also indirect uh, driven by the minus chemical potential gradient the same idea can be performed to have the interstitial atomic flux directly contribute from the minus chemical potential gradient indirectly driven by the electrical field we apply on the system. So based on the re re uh, regarding to the current density part, as we know, it need, need to obey the Ohm's law, so it will be equal to electrical conductivity times electrical field. But related to, but on the other hand, the interstitial atomic flux part. This part actually is due to the uh, the chem minus chemical potential gradient of the interstitials, and this term actually the uh, contribute from the electrical field part, right? So we also uh, uh, label this term is J one uh, E. E means due to the electrical field we apply on the system. So how much the atomic interstitial atomic flux be dri uh, be drive or be driven? So as you know, in order to formulate the J one E, then you know this atoms, this the interstitial atoms, the flux for this one can be expressed like the mobility of these interstitials, concentration of these interstitials, and the driving force applied on these interstitials. So my question would be, what's the driving force? How many driving force apply on these interstitials? So here we try to use the beta E to represent the driving force here. What's the beta E? Because we have the electrical field be applied on it, right? Beta, some people call it as the effective charge of the diffusing atoms. Effective charge means this atom, the this atom, uh, what this atom was, uh, was moved or was pushed toward to the anode, right? So it is uh, almost equal to how many charges, which means the effective charge of the diffusing atoms. But we don't know, right? So probably you first of oh, probably you need to analyze how many, uh, what's the driving force apply on this effective charge, oh sorry, this interstitials. So because uh, we they apply the electrical field also, uh, there's a field, electrical field uh, there's a force we call a field come from the electrical field and also there's lots of electrons flow push this um, metal ions toward the anode so we also have the electrons wing serving a driving force so the, the sum of this um, force we call uh, the sum of this four co uh, this force be applied on this system. 
or some people who call the net driving force be applied on this interstitial, we call it F small e, can be expressed like beta e. And some people uh, use the use a z star times the e to represent the beta, which is the effective charge of diffusion atoms. And the z star can be uh, divided into, or they can be separated into two parts. The first one is come from the electrical field, and the other part will be come from the electric electrons wing. Okay. And as we know, the most important part will be the net driving force apply on this uh, interstitial. If the beta, this beta is negative, means this interstitial is going to move toward to the anode, which is the same direction with the electrons flow. Okay? So the sign of the beta tell you the direction, the moving direction of this interstitial. And based on this idea, you know that the beta is you cannot just simply assign, assign a value for beta. You need to measure the beta in your system by yourself, right? Because the beta is the the sum summation of these two. Uh, driving force and field as long regarding to the electrical field as long as you apply the same electrical field on it you know the what's the driving force on this electrical field right but regarding to the uh, electrons wing will be depending on the current density or you probably will call you will say that it will depending on the elect the magnitude of the electrons flow right Okay, so this is just some notes. If we also write this, uh, put this uh, two terms, are, these two terms are, are the same, right? So we can uh, know the coupler, what's the, what is the coupling coefficient is related to the diversity of diffuse of these interstitials, concentration of these interstitial, and also the beta and the time, or story, not the time, the temperature. Okay, so as long as we know this, uh, the J one E, so we substitute, we put this J, uh, put this J one E back here, re rewrite this equation. So the interstitial time flux equals to the first part here. Actually, is due to the diffusion, right? You can directly use the minus diversity times the concentration gradient, which is the fixed first slow. The second term actually is due to this one, right? We just directly uh, write this down, put them here. So it will be the mobility, mobility, the same, right? So you can mobility, mobility, concentration, and the driving force here. So this is the interstitial atomic flux. But some people, in order to simplify it, some people will assume if the interstitial, the concentration of interstitials uh, is very small at the beginning, or af after, in the beginning, so you can just uh, delete this turn out, then you will get the interstitial tummy flux will be the directly equals to mobility concentration and the driving force term. Driving force actually is a beta E. Okay. So uh, next slide is as I mentioned before, in order to get the interstitial tummy flux, the facility you can check from the literature. Temperature we know that concentration we can use the EPMA to uh, to estimate the concentration of diffusing atoms or an electrical field is what I apply, we apply on the system. So beta, the unknown parameter now is only beta. So how to measure the beta? As I mentioned, beta actually is a summation of these two forces applied on these interstitials. 
So how to measure the beta? So here we are going to use slide to show you how to determine the beta in your own system. So in the beginning, I, I'm going to prepare the materials, the metal materials with uh, dropped interstitials. And the concentration of in these interstitials uh, is, very, is uniform uh, in our materials. So this is uh, in the beginning what we have, so we don't have this term, right? And next I'm going to apply the electrical field on these materials and the direction will be to the left-handed side. So I'm going to really apply the electrical field and direction here so we know this is the, the anode and this is the cathode. So this is anode, this is a cathode, so electrons flow will be go to the right-handed side. This as long as this electron flow is high enough, it, it so it is going to push the interstitial atoms toward to right-handed side. So the concentration profile will turn to be like this because some interstitials will push from here to from left-handed side toward to right-handed side and so the concentration profile will go this way. So when you try to write down the also oh, probably this will be used as small e will be more suitable for this one. So the J I E is mobility concentration driving force. So this is a J I E will be E due to the uh, this atomic flux is due to the electrical field we apply on the system. Okay, so because you uh the concentration now profile now is have some is uh, have some variation along materials, right? So now the fixed first law will come to balance this uh this e this uh effect. So the uh the as long as we do have exist of the concentration variation, the fixed first law is going to going to counterbalance this this flux. Uh, due to the elect electro migration, okay. So as long as uh, this uh reach the Quincy steady state, which means the net flux equals to zero, net flux equals to zero means the this one will be equal to to this one, right? So, which means the concentration of of the concentration profile does not change with time. That means the net, net flux equals to zero. Under this situation, we know the list flux will be equal to this flux. The magnitude of this flux will be equal to this flux. So based on this, this term will be equal to this term. So I can get the beta, move the rest of part, the rest of turns to the right-handed side. Then we got this term, right? So let's check here. So in... uh. We can measure the concentration profile of the interstitials, right? And working temperature. And also we know the, the electrical field actually we apply on it. Regarding to the concentration of interstitials, you can take the average to uh to to substitute this term. Okay? So now you know we can determine the the value of the beta. So the idea is here, uh, if I ask you to uh, desire an experiment to measure the beta, so probably you will do like this, right? Uh, I prepare uh, a metal with a um, uniform distribution of the interstitial. Then I apply the electrical field on these metals. Then when I find that the concentration profile of the interstitials does not change with time, which means I measure probably one hour when when I uh, when I after I apply the electrical field, then after like one hours, uh, ten hours, twenty four hours, two days or four days, when I find that. 
As long as the concentration profile does not change with time at that moment, I can say the net flux equals to zero. So I can, as long as I'm under that condition, I can measure the concentration profile uh, and the electrical field, temperature, and the average of uh, concentration of interstitials, then I can get the beta. So let's some uh, and materials analyze tool you are going to use for example like you can use the epma to measure the concentration profile or xps right then you can uh get the uh beta the value for the beta in your interesting systems okay so today we just ended here